All right, guys, welcome back to the next episode here. Episode four of our series of Williams here in Azerbaijan, Baku, for our first sprint race of our series. It's going to be one practice qualifying, practice two, which we most likely won't be doing, and then sprint race, and then that lineup will lead into the main race. Uh, quick little update. Uh, I really hope that I have fixed my audio issues. I joined the OBS Discord, and it turns out a lot of other people are having the same issue as me, and this originally started around January uh, time. So if there's any uh, delays that you guys noticed, I have been trying to troubleshoot those as best possible, as well as the audio, um, the stuttering or the high pitch crackling. Um, I know that happened in the last race. Uh, last episode, but uh, we're trying to combat that as best as we can because I know we can't um, alleviate all of it, but uh, I'm sure it will improve throughout the series. And a quick little recap off of the last race. Um, Alpha Tauri not doing so great, Alpha Romeo not doing so great, Alpine is scoring three points with uh, Pierre Gasly as, um, yeah, not doing so great. As uh, Pierre Gasly and Oscar Piastri have that DNF from last race, as well as, I believe, Lando Norris. Yeah, he had ended up getting a DNF there as well. And, uh, yeah, so we're having a... We had a couple other... We had another... Um, we had another arrow uh, part come in, and I believe... Two durb... One durability and one chassis, I believe, came in as well. So we will have... A few upgrades coming into this weekend as um, we're sitting pretty comfortable here with the season with that lucky P2 finish um, there in Australia last race. But uh, and still not really sure who we want as our rival because it asked us who our uh, current rival is. And uh, we're not really sure who we want as a rival right now for those extra R&D points. But uh, that second place trophy for Australia is pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, so without further ado, we're going to get right into qualifying after practice. So we will see you guys in qualifying. Alright, we are here in qualifying, and uh, I unfortunately was fucking with um, Cheat Engine, and I was testing some driver transfers around, let's uh, say Daniel Ricardo, spoiler for later in the season, for Alpha Tauri, and I tried to get Nick DeVries back in for that second slot, but that was after I went into the race weekend, so uh, very unfortunate. And um, we're only going to be having nine people on the grid, but uh, so to speak, we're going to have Nick DeVries out for this weekend. But F1, uh, FIA decides to let Alpha Tauri run solo. So um, instead of resetting our entire series, we'll just have to deal with this one little hiccup and make sure we don't do it in the future. So let's get out onto the track. All right, we are hopping out on the track for qualifying here in Baku for the sprint race as uh, a little bit of contact there on uh, the wall on the right side. And uh, currently sitting P11 after not actually setting a time right now, so not very many people have set a time. 148.544 for our first run around. Uh, still sitting around P11, so the next time we come around, uh, I found a little bit more comfortable here around those walls on the last straight, hitting the DRS. Two tenths, but our um, our downforce is definitely proving otherwise because we are losing a lot of that time. Uh, barely any improvement from our first lap here, as uh, we got knocked back to P12 with no impr improvement on position currently. P19 here with the incident with uh, Nick DeVries here. About six tenths of a second, gaining a little bit of time there. Uh, if you guys notice the dip down, we hit the DRS. We gained about another two tenths, uh, tenth and a half of a second 
eight tenths of a second gain there, and that's only getting us P17. All right, so this time around here in Baku, not so well. Uh, starting in P17, um, not really having that straight line speed there in the first time as we were losing time. And uh, Valtteri Bottas getting a fifth place, five place position there at the end. So we'll get bumped up to P16 for the uh, sprint race here. As uh, once again, we are only uh, 19 drivers for this weekend because of our little uh, mishap with uh, Teen Engine with the driver transfers. But uh, we won't let that bother us as we uh, make sure that we can get Nick DeVries in for the next race after this episode. Uh, but uh, that's about it for qualifying. Uh, we have a challenge ahead of us, so let's get right to the sprint race. So it's all about speed in today's sprint. Not very many laps and no chance to get ahead on strategy. Who here today has the raw skill to take them to the top? Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting sprint. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Russell, Perez, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Gasly, Ocon, Sonoda, Holkenberg, Joe, Bottas, Johnson, Magnussen, Sargent, and Nick de Vries. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. After the points finished last race, let's aim to keep that momentum going. All right, looks like I was a little bit wrong there about the uh, cheat engine. We do have Nick de Vries. In this sprint race, he was just not in the uh, practice and qualifying sessions. So, uh, if that's the only issue, then we will go ahead and stick with that. As um, we're going to just stick with our soft compound six lap race and see what we can do. It seems like it's a regular online um, five lapper. So, let's see how we can do on these soft tires. All right, soft tire strategy here on our six lap sprint race here in Baku. The five red lights are on and we are off to a pretty decent start. The Alpha Towery or the Alpha Romeo next to us off to a pretty bad start here. Uh, you can see the two hasses there in the middle as uh, we don't really make any positions here as we're coming up next to the Hass of, of, of I believe, Magnuson. Uh, trying to make a move on the outside, but uh, nowhere to go pretty much as the Hass makes their move on the inside. Of us, so yes, it was Hulkenberg and not Magnuson. So that's basically where we were slotted in for the entirety of the first lap was P15 uh, between Hulkenberg and Grand Ujo. As we're coming back into the uh, last straight, almost coming in contact with that wall, <sighs> we'll be seeing these walls a lot this weekend as we have the Alfa Romeo and then the Haas, um, Alfa Tauri, and then the Haas in front of us. And uh, moving on to lap four is when we actually start to see some action. Hul Hulkenberg still ahead, about two second gap from Ocon. And we can see Magnussen closing in on us, uh, now having DRS. But um, simply before DRS, he ends up passing us before we could get it, I believe. As uh, we still try to fight for that position here, we end up breaking late into turn one, almost coming into that wall here. And uh, about another... 5.6 now, 5.8 gap between uh, P15 and P14 of Tsunoda at this point. So yeah, this lap 5. And uh, the back of the pack is um, struggling to uh, keep up with the rest of the pack. So definitely have to keep an eye out for that during the main race. But uh, here we are trying to defend position against Magnuson. Coming through these uh, tight corners here. And uh, rounding out the end of lap six here as we come up to the end 
of the sprint race. We go a little bit wide. Magnuson about 1.5 seconds now, 1.1 in closing in. We have a little bit of oversteer there as we almost hit the wall. And um, in those last few corners there, we almost hit the wall. So we try to cut off into the corner. Magnuson on the mediums uh, getting a lot better pace than us. As you can see, those red arrows. And Joe Grand Yu making a move on the inside. A little bit of contact there as he manages to take P15 from us there at the end. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. The grid is set then, so that just leaves the race itself. Join us tomorrow where we'll be live with all the action. And until then, goodbye. All right, so not a very eventful uh, sprint race here as uh, Joe Grenu beats us out at the very end. Magnuson almost does as well. As uh, we're gonna be starting in P16 for the main event. Uh, exactly where we started so uh, yeah um, red one two yeah so uh, Sergio Perez gets bumped up Carlos Leclerc gets bumped up for the grid order Lance Stroll as well Nico Hulkenberg up in P13 uh, I get bumped up in the P7 P16 for that penalty yeah, so uh, we're going to see how everything goes, and uh, we'll see you guys at the main event. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, part of Baku, and home, of course, to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners, and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes, and hopefully out of the barriers. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers, and it's made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge where the smallest of mistakes could lead to a catastrophic consequence for any one of our drivers. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Norris, Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Gasly, Ocon, Hulkenberg, Johnson, Magnussen, De Vries, Sargent, Sonoda, Joe, and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. And what would any Grand Prix weekend be without the one and only Anthony Davidson alongside me, as always, to talk you through the action. Why don't we kick off by discussing Max Verstappen? Well, it was a really impressive lap in qualifying to get pole position, but are they going to be able to hold on to the lead into the first corner with so many quick starters around them? And apart from that, keep an eye out for anyone getting a good launch from the midfield. You see it happen from time to time, and it can really throw a spanner into the races of the quicker cars and push them into a more risky strategy. All right, so we get bumped up to P14 with the uh, Alfa Romeos getting a penalty as well as Yuki Tsunoda. And, um, yeah, so, uh, track's gonna cool down a bit. And I don't want to... I, I wasn't feeling very well on those top, soft tires. So... Uh really don't want to go with the soft tires but it is a faster route but we are going to go with the soft to mediums on lap eight and see what we can do um depending on how we feel on the the track depending on how temperatures are going then uh, we'll be able to elongate the life of the tires maybe lap nine hopefully but we will see how we uh perform on this so uh yeah let's get right out there
Okay, good parking there, mate. Now we need to make sure we get a great launch as the race starts. All right, so we are set up in our grid slot here for the main race, starting in P14 after those penalties between Hulkenberg and Magnussen. These five red lights are on. And uh, swapping over to the onboard here as we're off to a decent start. The Alpine ahead of us, not to a very good start, especially the uh, McLaren of Oscar Piastri up there is uh, almost coming in contact with Ocon and uh, splitting the two Hasses and the Alphatari De Vries as he's trying to make a move on us. Uh, the Hass of Hulkenberg also moving up against Ocon. We try to make a move on him as well. We do get that position up into P13. And we're pretty much going to be holding the position for a few laps here as uh, we're coming around these corners. But moving on to the next piece of action, we're actually on the board with the Red Bull of Sergio Perez. I believe this is lap 3 or 4 at this point. Uh, DRS is active and we're coming around to Sector 2 just before the castle section and Sergio does lose control, spins out and uh, gets stuck in the corner, um, not being able to rejoin the track there. So, going to be on board with him once again. He just basically hits the curve a little bit too much, puts a little bit too much gas on there. As uh, you can see, the Mercedes, the Aston Martins, the McLaren, and then uh, just after that, myself. So, moving on to lap four, we are going through this yellow flag safety car and I thought about going in the first time, but I didn't. And uh, you can see these other uh, position changes here as uh, Hulkenberg goes in ahead of us and a couple others, uh, such as Hamilton, Alonso, uh, Perez. But uh, yeah, on the next lap, we actually decided to go in and it was uh, kind of a pain because not only do we go in, but our teammate of Logan Sargent goes in right behind us pretty much. Um, the only person separating us was the Haas of, I believe, Hulkenberg this time. Uh, I could be wrong, probably Magnuson. But, um, swapping from the softs to the hards, uh, to try to finish out the rest of this race on those hard compound tires. As, uh, we get beat out by the McLaren, and kind of ghosting through here. But, uh, rejoining the pack, and, um, have some work to do. And it's only lap 5 of Baku City Circuit. So, back up to P15 on the restart. Hulkenberg ends up having to retire the car on the safety car restart. So, he will be out of this race. Uh, Logan Sargent getting stuck behind us on that double stop. And uh, sitting all the way back on P19. As we come back to the uh, uh, restart of this race here. And now uh, there we are on that wall again. Almost coming in contact as we try to wait for our mark here behind Lando Norris. And uh, his teammate, uh, Oscar Piastri, up in P2 because they have not fit. So, Gasly, Piastri, but Piastri does come in on a restart. So, he's going to miss out on that back up into P19 here. As uh, we kind of take it easy on this restart lap. And uh, try to make a move on Norris here on the inside. Uh, no DRS just yet after this yellow flag restart. We'll be getting uh, DRS on lap 9. As we try to make a move on the outside, he's not wanting to move here. So uh, try to hold him off on the inside. We break a little bit late coming in behind Russell. Uh, kind of squeezing him out there on that corner. And uh, retaking P13 on lap 7 after this restart. And uh, you can see all the other cars here, still single file. As uh, coming up to the castle section here in Sector 2, a little bit of rear end coming out there as uh, Norris uh, almost tries to make a move on us, but says not to. As uh, we're holding our single file here, and um, yet again, there's a little bit of bug here with this helmet. Uh, if it's shady or dark or anything like that, the helmet is just completely black, you can't really see it. But I did talk to Jamie about it, and there's not really any fix that will be coming anytime soon to these helmets, and that's nothing too big to worry about. So we're coming down the end of Sector 3 here, almost coming in contact with that wall in that downhill section. This is very dangerous. I've hit that wall in the past in F121 uh, so long ago, but uh, we do get off to a good start 
through Sector 3 against Norris, and then we're still losing a lot of time to George Russell. So, the back of this pack now, P13 to P19. Uh, still losing a lot of ground, and Piastri's still there, about 6.8 seconds behind. As Lando Norris tries to make a move, you can see him in the mirror on the left side, and uh, we outbreak him here to try to hold on to that position. Uh, starting lap 8, and uh, Lance Stroll having to uh, take a pit stop, I believe, or uh, lose a couple of positions here, but there are... It's a five-way battle for... Um, one of the top 10 spots. So we're coming around the outside of George Russell, trying to make a move on him, but uh, no luck here. We try to make a move on the inside here. Um, almost coming in contact with him as we come over this curb. And uh, Valerie Bottas right in front of us, having to move out of the way. Uh, not having that much momentum here. As uh, sitting on hard tires. Same as us, but not as much grip. As uh, we're now up into P10, and about 1.4 seconds behind Carlos Sainz. And uh, he manages to make a couple positions as we're now still P10 behind DeVries. About two tenths behind him as he's about another uh, second and a half behind Max Verstappen. So, I'm very glad that our uh, mishap in the menus with uh, Nick DeVries was still able to let him be on the track. As we almost come into contact with that wall in Sector 3. Um, I've scraped it a few times in my past in F122, but we do make that move on Nick DeVries, and Verstappen making the move on Ocon. It looks like Ocon and Bottas went into the pits for a second pit stop. As, uh, if you guys noticed there, for a mere second, you can see him in the pits. As we're now sitting up in P8 instead of P10, so we gain two positions off of that. And, uh, next up is Max Verstappen up in P7, about 2.1 seconds ahead. And we are up in P7. Um, but that time, that time has increased. So the top six are about five seconds out. And uh, George Russell seeming to easily close in on us here in Sector 3. As, um, like I said in qualifying, our downforce setup um, is requiring us to lose a lot of speed. Even though we have those upgrades. George Russell on the outside making a move. As we try to hold him off, try to squeeze him off there on the curb, we do so uh, effortlessly. And Norris trying to make a move on Russell as well. So, lap 13. And we're starting to feel the wear and tear of these hard compound tires. Uh, very glad that we... At this point, I'm very glad that we didn't come in after that safety car. But uh, Joe Granu having to retire the car a few laps ago. Uh, didn't see that because we had transitioned, but uh, teammate of Valtteri Bottas... They're back in P18. Logan Sargent at the P15 after those pit stops. And um, that time to the top six just keeps getting worse and worse as we're 7.6 behind. And George Russell again on the outside trying to make a move. And we have Lance Stroll uh, in the tow right behind him on the outside. So once again, we hold the inside line, try to break as late as possible. A little bit of contact there with Russell as uh, we're coming out of turn one. And uh, Stroll, just right there in the mix. Uh, let's see, Norris. Um, he's still sitting back there in P10, trying to fight for a better position here as we're rounding out to lap 14. Lord Russell, yet again, trying to make a position here. And uh, Lance Stroll as well. But look at this, Lando Norris. A lot of momentum coming from him as he is on the inside. He's taking up a position. He's now up to P8 after that. He's getting two positions off that main straight. And uh, holding that inside line against us and Russell. But um, we take that position back. A little bit of smoke from Russell there off the curb. And uh, it's basically going to be back and forth. So we're back on the main straight here in Sector 3 to Sector 1. Running P8. Lando Norris. Taking that inside line position here as uh, Lance still tries to make a move on us. But uh, yeah, so we're losing position against Lando Norris as well here on lap 16 as uh, we kind of break late here almost coming in contact with that wall uh, still having a chance to make a move but not quite and uh, another situation on lap 17 Gasly being able to pass Lance Stroll and try to make a move on us on the outside so uh, we're still there in the mix about five of us they're trying to fight for our position we're holding the inside line 
But uh, Gasly's not making that mistake that uh, Lando Norris and Russell did. He makes that move on the inside, taking that position. And uh, once again, lap 18, these hard compound tires are feeling very worn. And uh, we managed to lose three positions because of how long we've been on these tires. So uh, Lance Stroll trying to make a move on the inside here uh, through Sector 2, I believe. I believe it's about the start of Sector 2 around here. But we do make that inside line, uh, losing a little bit of the back end. But uh, we still have enough grip to kind of get ahead of Lance Stroll and try to fight for that position. But not much is going to change because we do end up holding that position in okay, P10. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. It's victory in Azerbaijan. Great work from the whole team here at the track and back at the factory as well. And some pretty handy driving for good measure. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own and that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently, and it's clear to see that they've put in the work, and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. So let's review the driver's standings. Well, not the result our points leader would have wanted, but it certainly makes things interesting going forward. Now, let's discuss Ant. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Well, there was a lot of incredible driving out there today, but if I had to pick someone, it's got to be Sergio Perez. Fantastic driving. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend for them as they fight their way towards the top. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. All right, a little confused there as they gave me a uh, driver of the day, but they were talking about Sergio Perez. But, uh, yeah, a pretty rough race, P16. Um, we took a gamble there with the um, yellow flag pit stop. Uh, double stopping with our teammate, a local sergeant, which I uh, should have gone the first lap, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. I just wanted to see if I can run to my regular pit stop, but I'm glad we didn't go uh, pit stop after the yellow flag because uh, that gamble with the hard tires as uh, we're running out towards the end uh we did lose a few positions against pierre gasly lando norris and them but uh yeah so uh overall weekend with sergio perez i think that's why they were saying that but if we're looking at the actual race lando norris george russell pierre gasly all uh passing me up and uh yeah so right there at the very end uh trying to hold position i've against i believe lance stroll behind me i saw i thought i saw a little bit of a green but it could have been kevin magnuson and uh nick the breeze there in uh, p14 not getting any points but uh we do get one point for this weekend in azerbaijan as we are sitting in uh uh 10th place for the driver standings and then uh still sitting in p7 for uh constructors so uh still Hoping to see some work from our teammate of Logan Sargent. And I believe he did finish in P13 last race. And he dropped down to P18 for this race with the DNF of Joe Granue and Nico Hulkenberg. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. We will see you guys in the next one.